Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. Let's talk bass traps once again in this video, because I got a really great question from one of my subscribers that I want to go through in this video. And this is from Viger from Holland, and he says, maybe something you could include in your next video, are bass traps only useful in a mixing room? Or would a recording room for drums also benefit from bass traps? Very good question. I think this is a great opportunity to talk about the difference between the acoustics of a mixing room versus a recording room. Because there are fundamental differences, in particular about the goal, the target that you want to reach. So that's what I want to talk about in this video. But before I do that, if you're interested in controlling the low end in your studio. Maybe you're looking at different bass traps online, you're looking at resonance traps, membrane traps, porous absorber bass traps, you're wondering what the right solution for your room is, then I want you to download my complete guide to bass traps and bass trapping completely for free at the link in the description. This is basically an encyclopedia of all the different types of bass traps out there, both off the shelf and DIY style. So obviously porous absorber traps, but all types of resonance traps, Helmholtz traps, membrane traps, combined traps, tube traps, active traps, they're all in there and it's all nicely laid out for you. So you can, first of all, understand what you're looking at when you're looking at different types of products online, but then also how to actually use them, how they work, how many you would need in your room and where to actually place them. How do you go about figuring out where they need to go in your room? This is all nicely condensed in my complete guide to bass traps and bass trapping that you can download for free at the link in the description. So do you need bass traps in a recording room when you're recording drums, for example? The short and simple answer is yeah, of course, if you want a controlled sound, a controlled low end sound in your recordings and your room isn't actually giving that to you, isn't delivering on that, then you need to use bass traps to tame that low end and get it to where you need to be. There's a big but here though, and that's what I really wanna talk about. That's the difference between the acoustics in a mixing room and a recording room. While in a mixing room, you have certain rules or at least guidelines that you can follow to achieve a certain target, or rather that target is actually quite fixed. It's quite clear what you need the room to do in order for the speakers to be the least distorted basically by the room. In a recording room, it's completely different because it all depends on what kind of sound you actually like in your recordings, right? It depends on the style of music, the instruments you record, your particular taste obviously in music, your workflow. Do you like to capture everything in the recordings or do you prefer to have the flexibility of post-processing working with spaces afterwards? These are all questions that you need to answer in order to determine what you want your recording room to actually sound like so that that gets captured in your recordings. So really the process of treating a recording room starts with an introspective analysis of what you want the recorded sound to actually sound like. Then you figure out what the room is giving you and that will determine the path that you need to take in terms of the acoustic treatment. So in a sense, recording room acoustics is really just art. It is what you decide what you want your recordings to sound like. Of course, the, the acoustic process the treatment process, the physics behind getting to that goal is still pure, pure physics, it's still science. But figuring out what target to reach, what goal to reach is very different when you're treating a recording room versus a mixing room. That said, in particular, if you're working in a small room, that poses very real restrictions on that whole freedom of choice that you would usually have in a recording room. And the reason is simple. The small rooms are basically dominated by standing waves in the low end and then reflections in the upper spectrum. And neither of these sound particularly good if unchecked, right? So in terms of low end, think very boomy bass, very resonant bass that kind of draws out or 
just completely lack of base as well. And then when we're talking about specular reflections, that's that typical small room sound that is really kind of close to the actual dry instrument and is so baked in to the recording that it's basically impossible to get rid of afterwards. Neither of these sound particularly good. And so in a small room, it really makes sense to try and follow a strategy, a path towards a goal where the room really is as best suppressed as possible, simply because you it's very difficult to change that small room sound and that standing wave dominating pattern into something constructive, something that gives you kind of an open, long decay while not having any of the issues that these acoustic problems bring with them. So it makes sense to really kind of clamp down on that sound, really dry out the room to the point where you just end up having very dry controlled recordings that you can then post-process and choose what type of space you actually want in that recording, in that actual music. And that of course means substantial amounts of bass trapping just like in a mixing room, especially when we're talking about the low end, obviously. And the kind of side benefit of all of this is that if you do intend to use the room for mixing as well, you're basically hitting two targets with one stone, right? So you can you can actually create a space that is both suitable for a mixing setup as well as a recording setup. And I recently made a video about actually treating hybrid mixing and recording rooms and what that entails. I'll put a link to that video in the card right now. But so do bass traps make sense in a recording room? Absolutely, right? If you want a controlled low end and you don't have it, and especially in a small room, then the way to go is to clamp down, to dampen those standing waves, to really dry out the room, especially in the low end, by using bass traps. But always keep in mind that it is you who gets to decide what your recordings sound like, what the room sounds like on your recordings, and whatever path takes you there is the right approach for you, be that with bass traps or whatever else. So I hope that answered that question. With that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.